Hi, this is Harish here. Welcome to DB2 LUW Tips and Tricks Video Tutorial Part 52. In this video tutorial, I'm going to talk about how to find if backup image file is consuming high RAM space. This slide talks about the problem and the solution. So the problem scenario is we want to find if the backup image file is consuming more RAM. Uh, whenever you take a database backup using the DB2 backup database command, uh, it will cache the image file in a special memory area in the RAM called as file system cache. Uh, so uh, if it is caged in the file system, so it is going to in the file system cache, it is going to take some amount of RAM space. So we can like, if we are able to bypass this file system cache, we can save some RAM space and also some CPU cycles associated with the backup. So it's not going to tremendously improve, but definitely there will be some improvement. So uh, you have to really test this out in a case to case basis. So what is the solution for it? Like how to bypass the file system cache? So there is a feature called as direct IO or concurrent IO at the OS level. So you have to use the uh, DIO or CIO uh, for bypassing the file system cache. So how to do that on the backup command? So you can use the registry variable db2 set db2 underscore backup underscore use underscore dio equal to on. So by default it is not set and it will uh, it leaves the the, the io to the uh, os. So if you set db2 backup use dio on, then uh, the db2 backup image file will not be caged in the file system cache. Uh, so once you set the registry variable, you can restart the instance and start the backup of the uh, database. So uh, then you will find that that particular backup image will not be in the file system cache. So it is actually, you know, uh, double buffering, like the concept re uh, uh, revolves around the double buffering because uh, the file will be there in the file system cache and it is also there in the hard disk. And remember not the entire backup image uh, will, will be in the file system cache. So the file system cache is still managed only by the OS. Like uh, if there are some other uh, more process requests, more memory, so it can clear some area from the file system cache. Okay. <coughs> let's look at few examples here. So first let me uh, show you the current memory. So for that I have used the command free here. So you can see that uh, see here, uh, the, the currently itself the cache is 484 uh, MB like that, right? So OS by default will, uh, you know, you uh, it will cache some uh, files, okay? So let us clear the uh, cache. Uh, so how do you clear it? You can use this uh, special file drop underscore caches and input three to that particular file. So let's just clear the f uh, uh, file system cache. Let's see what happens here, okay? So after uh, clearing the file system cache, okay. Let me run free again. So you can see that <coughs> the cache area has come down, right? So it was 557, 484. So when I ha once I have issued the command drop caches, uh, this command, so you can see the cache area has drastically come down, right? So how to find out if a particular file is there in the file system cache? So there is a uh, command for it, vm touch. This is actually not a command, this is a C program that I have compiled. It's a, some free tool I got from internet, okay? Um, so dot forward slash vm touch hyphen v, uh, the file name, okay? So I'm going to give that in here, okay? So no such file or directory. So currently there is no uh, backup image, so it is not showing anything. So you can see that 0 bar 0, 0 bar 0 like that, okay? Uh, so next what we'll do, we'll set the uh, this registry variable to off. It, it is already uh, off only, it should be already off only. So I'll not do that. So I'll just take a backup, okay, of the sample uh, database, okay? So let me take a backup. So once the backup is completed, right? So see, you can, uh, assume some uh, you know some memory area will be used right cache uh, uh, a file system cache will be used for the backup command so even after running also it will be you know uh, living in the cache so that's what I am talking about here so let the backup complete so once the backup completes we can always uh, run this command vm touch okay control c see you the backup is complete now you can see that, see here, 100%. So 189 MB is the total size and 189 MB is currently in the memory also. So you can see that here, see. Uh, 
hundred uh, percent this particular uh, file is in the cache. So how to verify that? So I can see here. See now, two hundred and twenty-four MB was the cached area. Now it became four hundred and thirty-two, right? So that is because of that particular cache. Now again, I have to free the particular uh, uh, cache, uh, you know, buffer. So I will come here. I will enter the same command again. So it should have uh, cleared it now. See now it has become two twenty. So almost two hundred MB, right? So that that is the one I am talking about. Okay. So now we have cleared it. So this time what I am going to do is I am going to set this registry variable to on, then stop the instance, restart the instance, remove the backup uh, uh, file, and I'll again take a backup. Okay. This is just a very simple offline backup that I am taking. So I am setting the registry variable to on, stop the instance. Again, I'll uh, you know after the stop, I'll start the instance. Okay, stop successfully. Now start should also yes. Then I am doing rm minus rf, so I'm removing the existing image, uh, and now I'm again triggering a backup. Okay. So this time, if you see, okay, you know it is again 418, right? So during the backup, obviously the memory will be there, but after the completion of the backup, the file should not be caged. Right. See the the. Uh, let us run this now. See here, zero percent. See earlier we got like hundred percent, right? Uh, for example, okay, the history is gone. Uh, yeah, here. See here. See earlier after the backup got completed, when I ran this VM touch, I was able to see that the entire file was in memory, right, in the RAM space. Now if I say after the backup is complete. Now, zero percent. The it is not in the buffer area, so you can verify that here also. See here, two eighty. So roughly about again again some hundred to two hundred MB we have saved, right? <coughs> so this is the uh, concept for the direct I/O, and it is also applicable for table spaces, uh, but that I'll uh, talk in a uh, different tutorial. Okay. Uh, that's it in this video tutorial. Hope this information was useful to you. Thanks uh, for watching this video. Please subscribe to my channel DB2LEW Academy. See you in the next video. Until then, bye bye.